Welcome to Zach D TV, the place for interesting news from around the net. In today's episode, we're going to look at three programs that will change the future, like a robot lawyer that can help you sue Equifax, or AI that can identify people even wearing masks. And then we'll wrap up with an AI that can guess human sexuality. Stick around for that one. It has some future implications. And as always, if you want more interesting news like this seven days a week, go ahead and click that subscribe button right over here and give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. All right, let's get right into this. Last week, Equifax put out a statement saying they had been hacked. 143 million American social security numbers were stolen from the company, along with I think it was 200,000 driver's license numbers. Heck, they got birth dates, addresses, previous addresses, everything you need to fill out for credit. And they even got credit card numbers for 209,000 people. While these hacks occurred back in May and June, it did take them over a full month to report that this has happened. Well, because of that delay and that loss of our information, there's class action lawsuits popping up all over the place. And that's where my first program comes into play. The Do Not Pay Bot which was launched back in July, was originally designed to help people battle parking tickets and speeding tickets, things at a, at a magistrate level. Well, they gave it a new update that will allow you to sue Equifax for up to $25,000. Right now, they're only able to work in California or New York, but they are going to add the rest of the 50 states one by one, I'm guessing. Laws and forms differ in every state, so they have to gather information from 50 different places. But according to Joshua Browder, the inventor of this, and, like myself, one of the 143 million affected, says that he hopes that my product will replace lawyers and, with enough success, bankrupt Equifax. And to look at this critically, in a system where justice is supposed to be blind, a bot should be able to argue your case for you, if it's something presented on just facts. On the other hand, a lot of lawyers are stepping out against this, saying that you really can't use this bot to win a civil case. You do require a body in the courtroom, and basically all this bot is doing is filling out paperwork for you to submit. But at the same time, maybe visiting this bot before you jump in with a lawyer would be a good way to save some money and get a good look at what's coming up. I'm going to leave a link below so you can check and see if you were affected by this hack. And I'll also leave a link for the do not pay bot. Because like I said, even if you don't use him in these proceedings, he can help you get out of parking tickets and stuff too. You know, it's weird. Some days I run into a situation where all my topics just like pile on top of each other. So we started off with a robot lawyer. Next, we're going to look at some AI that can tell who you are, even if you're covering your face. Researchers at Cambridge, the National Institute of Technology, and the Indian Institute of Science have developed a deep learning AI that can identify people's faces, even when covered. They released a paper late last week that explained how their new AI can look at people wearing hats and glasses and scarves facial coverings, fake beers, whatever, and actually rebuild the face underneath those items based on the exposed area of the face. And it can do this correctly 69% of the time. Much better than just a guess. And while industry experts aren't really that enthused about this AI's ability, you have to keep in mind this is brand new. They're working with existing technology, making a couple little tweaks, and they're able to see a pretty solid success rate. I think what we need to focus on here though, more importantly than the success or failure rate of this, is that this is a new technology that is currently being developed to allow the government to track people protesting. Or if we believe our government can be fair, maybe just to track the people that are there causing issues, burning stuff, breaking windows, things like that, which I'd be fine with that then. And we do have to accept the fact that AI is and will be part of the law enforcement bag of tricks for from now till forever. In fact, just this June, the first arrest ever was made in Britain that was attributed to a facial recognition scanning. And according to research done by Georgetown University, over 117 million Americans are already in a law enforcement facial recognition network. But the one bright note I saw in this paper was that right now it cannot detect faces hidden under a full rigid mask like the Guy Fox mask or any of the other ones you see. Unfortunately, according to the lead researcher on this program, he believes in the next couple months that they'll be able to tell who's under the mask as well. So at that point, I don't know what you'd do if you want to attend a protest anonymously. And in my final story, as we marvel at what AI can do, we also have to worry about the future ramifications of it. 
Researchers at Stanford have released a paper. In their study, their AI was able to predict the sexual orientation of a subject 81% of a time when looking at only one image. When supplied with five images of the person, its success rate rose to 91%. It does this by looking at facial features and identifying traits that decide whether someone is heterosexual or homosexual. Things like the width of the jaw or the length of the nose or other things like that. In fact, here's an image that this AI generated by itself showing a composite of what features it sees as homosexual or heterosexual. Even though this AI now has been proven to work, it has as high as a 91% success rate a lot of people are coming out against it because they don't want to believe that technology can identify someone's sexual orientation. To me, I feel like the AI is picking up on what we consider our gaydar, basically the same subtle hints that allow you to look at someone and get a pretty close estimation of their preferences. But again, the bigger thing we need to look at is what does this do to people's right to privacy? What if an AI like this were to get into the hands of someone who wants to use it poorly? Kind of like in Chechnya where they're rounding up gay men and imprisoning them. Or could you imagine what would happen if somebody got their hands on this and started outing people on Facebook by searching profile photos? In fact, the team that did this study had to really consider whether they wanted to put the findings out there or not. And when they finally did, they say it's because they wanted to make people aware that this AI does exist. Using current technology, you can be the victim of this. So while I don't know what this implies exactly, I do feel like between AI that can tell who you are when you're wearing a mask and one that can tell if you're homosexual or not, we may be getting into the territory of losing too much privacy. And let me know what you think about all this in the comments down below. Other than that, I am going to wrap it up. Thanks for stopping in. Keep in mind, I do this Monday through Friday. It's five days a week with a live stream on Saturday and a short on Sunday. I am back at it now. Although I didn't get my new set finished yet, that should be up and ready sometime this week or next week. So stick with me. You'll see my new changes. And I guess other than that, have fun and be safe.